Hi and welcome to this week's Wu Wei Wisdom Life Lessons Teaching. It's great to be back with you all. This week we are focusing on self-confidence and trusting that you can cope when times get tough. Now, many people hold on to tremendous self-doubt, which means they avoid unfamiliar or challenging situations, and this really holds them back in their life. Well, in this teaching, you'll discover the origin of this self-doubt and how you can overcome it. Okay, David, so let's go back to basics. This is about self-trust and self-confidence and why we self-doubt. So how would you define self-confidence? Well, it's a really great first question because in that question, you kind of highlighted the problem. The problem is here separating your emotional feelings from what you believe and what you think. So self-confidence. Do you realize that confidence is a feeling? It's an emotional feeling. You either have a lack of confidence, your confidence is growing, your confidence is demeaning, your confidence has gone away. What you're doing there is you're describing an emotional feeling. Now, trust is not a feeling, it's a belief. So you see what happens and what creates the most confusion when I'm working with this with my clients is this kind of uh, corrupting of what you believe and why you believe it and the feelings that those beliefs create. And this is what is the number one thing that makes this so complicated. So, okay, let me try and <laughs> see if I can understand this in a very simple way. So what you've just said is, Self-confidence is a physical feeling, a physiological feeling. It's a description description. of a physiological feeling. You're putting a description on a feeling. So that would be a a feeling of inner relaxation, of uh, enthusiasm, of a kind of, uh, a kind of a, 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 it's a good feeling. It's a green light feeling as we would describe. Yes. So if you're confident, then you uh, have this feeling that allows you to deal with everything. I mean, look at sports teams. You see a team who are confident. That means through the team, they have this feeling, and then the feeling has changed the belief. They believe that they can do things. So the connection then to self-trust, and you said confidence is a feeling, trust is a belief. So if we trust ourselves or don't trust ourselves that's a belief about our own abilities what what's going to happen how we're going to react to a certain situation we're going to react uh with ease or we are we going to react by panicking and when when we hold that belief of 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 lack of trust or ultimate trust in ourselves that then has a knock on effect which creates the feeling of confidence or the opposite, a lack of self-confidence, self-doubt. Exactly. Just think about it. If you do not believe in yourself, if you don't trust yourself, if you are giving yourself the self-talk and the story, oh, this will fail, this will, will not work out, I will not be as good as my colleague on this, what is the consequence of that belief? That belief would be what you would call a lack of confidence. I call it a red light feeling. That's why I like to use the term red light feelings, because you see, it clears the confusion. Instead of calling it lack of confidence, no confidence, my confidence is dwining, just say, I have now chosen to create a red light feeling. The next question, now we're on the golden thread. Why have you chosen that? Well, because I believe I might fail. Mm. So that's the belief. And that creates the feeling. Now, once you get to the belief, this is where the Wu Wei wisdom really model comes into its own. Because then you can say the golden thread question, the why, the self-inquiry question. And you can do this for yourself. Why do you believe you're going to fail? Yeah. See the difference? Yeah. Now you're going down. It's, I often think with my clients, so, so, sorry to cut you, Alex, but I often think with, with my clients, it's like a fork in the road. 
They're so used to taking the emotional feeling thought mm -hmm. that just leads them on the carousel and now I need a confidence pill. I'll just have a quick drink of, of whiskey and that will give me confidence and I'll feel better, blah, 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 blah. But if you go down this road, why don't I believe in, in myself? It takes you down a different road. So actually, in a way, we shouldn't really, if we use the word confidence or lack of self-confidence, it, it confuses us. Confuses. So if we say, okay, I'm facing a uh, unfamiliar, challenging or difficult life situation, which is giving me red light, uncomfortable no, or painful we, No, feelings. which I'm creating. Okay. And I'm, I'm creating, I'm experiencing and creating red light feelings yeah. about this, uncomfortable, painful feelings. Now, if, if I follow those red light feelings because I don't want them anymore, I want to avoid those uncomfortable feelings, then the natural, well, natural, no, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure see, the, see. the choice often for most yeah. people is to avoid. Exactly. I will, I don't want to, naturally, I don't want to experience uncomfortable red light feelings therefore the easiest way out to get rid of those feelings is to avoid the unfamiliar situation is to avoid the challenging situation is to basically not progress with my life to cl start closing my life down and playing small but the but what we need to do as you said is to reverse engineer and to ask what am I thinking or believing right now, which is giving me those red light feelings? And as you've said, it's about self-doubt, a belief of self-doubt, a belief of that I can't cope. I'm not going to be able to cope with this unfamiliar or challenging situation, whether it's right in front of me now or it's something that I am imagining. So a kind of a worst case scenario outcome that I'm imagining. So Holding that belief is generating the red light feelings and the default that I've kind of got into the habit of is to avoid, is to yeah. avoid the situation. Yeah. So what you do, Alex, is extremely helpful to the subscribers. And it's really good that you ask these questions because this is exactly the questions that when clients come to me that they do. If you roll back the tape, I let Alex talk there. I could have stopped her almost at every time. Roll back the tape to when she started. Did you see the difficulty that she had in being accountable for creating the feelings? Well, I'm experiencing the feelings. Oh, the feelings are here. The feelings are there. No, stop saying that. You are creating the emotions. Now, please let me just confirm. I am not saying you shouldn't create emotions. I am not saying emotions are wrong. In no, emotions are what makes us amazing human beings. But please, the fork in the road is to accept without any doubt, not 99%, you are creating them. They might be absolutely uh, uh, the correct emotion to create. They may be appropriate, but you are creating them. Then when you get through that, that's the biggest hurdle. Now as, now, as Alex took you down that road and she kind of really found that hard to say, I am creating this red light emotion and I want to call this red light emotion lack of confidence. Now the next question is, why? See, accountability. Why am I creating that emotion? Now, then Alex went on to say, I'm creating that emotion because I'm facing a situation that... So what's the situation you're facing? So um, I'm about to start a new yeah. job and I'm worried that... Go, stop. Now you <laughs> see what she just did there? So Gone she to went feeling. to a feeling. So let me pull her back. This is exactly how I work with my clients. It drives them crazy. Go, stop. You've gone to it because we're so, it's almost like we're programmed to keep going to the feelings. And when we go to the feelings, we go down into this quagmire of feelings. I'm worried, I'm scared, I'm frightened, blah, blah, blah. So let's go back okay. now. Let's do this role play. Yeah. You're starting a new job. Okay. So, David, I am switching jobs um, and 
I'm experiencing red light feelings. No, stop. No, I'm creating red light Thank feelings you. about it. See, that can, can I just say, <laughs> this is why it's so important. And you see, it's even hard for Alex to say it. I am experiencing, that means you are the victim. How can you be a victim of a red light feeling that you are creating? How do you solve this? Don't create the feeling. Listen to what I'm saying. Don't create the feeling. Don't try and manage the feeling. Find out why you've chosen. You're going to hate me as well as I tell you this. Find out why you've chosen to create the feeling. It might be the right feeling. It might be good to start a new job creating fear. I would say not. But you might say, yes, David, you should walk into new every new situation, creating an overwhelming red light feeling that I want to call fear. And we could discuss that calmly as two adults. So you're starting a new job. Starting a new job. I am creating red light feelings about it because I believe that, well, I'm not going to be able to cope okay. with okay. the tasks that they're going to ask me to do. Right. So that's the belief. Yeah. See, very easy. David, I'm starting a new job and I believe I will not be able to cope with the tasks that they're going to give me. That's all we're talking about. Nothing to do with emotions now. Now you can do the golden thread. Why do you believe you, do you even know the tasks that they're going to give you? Well, I, I don't. And well, I have a rough idea, but obviously the, the setup, the managers is not as familiar as the old job that I'm my old job and that unfamiliarity and that uncertainty means I am careful now creating red light feelings but why are you creating the red light feelings because I believe I may not be able to cope if they give me yeah. something to do that I don't know what I'm doing but they expect me to do the task okay so why do you believe that you won't be able to cope <laughs> Because I know that in the past, well, it's more a case of in the past, I've not been very good at dealing with unfamiliar situations. And I kind of go into a panic mode. So you stop. Rather than being steady. Stop. stop. <laughs> Did you notice where she went again? Did you notice? What's panic? Emotional feeling. So you see, Alex is giving you such a wonderful example. These words we use, you know, I say on so many of these teachings, the words we use are the bricks we build that build the house we live in. This is the house that Alex is living in. Mm. This, this is the reality. And I can tell you why she couldn't cope in the past, because she was saying all of this. Yeah. And so it's a self-fulfilling Prophecy that I call it, you call it confirmation bias. I prefer self-fulfilling. You are self-fulfilling a prophecy and proving yourself right. What are you proving yourself right on? I can't cope. So you set up a program, like a computer program, that self-affirms that you can't cope. You actually go into a situation actually making yourself not cope. Yeah. This, this is why... You've got to separate your emotions. Please, if you take one thing from all of our teachings, we've done hundreds of teachings, separate your emotions from your beliefs. Your life will change today, immediately. Do not be the victim of your emotions. Create your emotions and make them appropriate. I mean, this actually is a, a, a proper example for me because maybe about 20 or so years ago, I went into a new career and it was a big step up uh, this new job and at that time I told myself so many worst case scenarios of run-throughs in my mind this is before I even started the job where I got it and about how everybody would be looking at me how I wouldn't be able to do the task how I'd be a failure in meetings what the boss would how the boss would react how it would then spiral out of control and all this negative thinking created more and more red light emotions which increasingly disabled my ability to be calm rational and carefully pick through things that were perhaps naturally unfamiliar to me or naturally challenging to me. And 
despite all the angst, if you like, that I did put myself through thinking about all the worst case scenarios, I did actually pick my way through all the new challenges, all the new tasks, which at the time seemed like a mountain to climb. But I now know on reflection, it was a really strong lesson for me that I, after that, it, I believe now I can almost cope with anything because it's, I like, I proved to myself that all the stuff that was going on in my head in anticipation of starting the job and for the first few months, it served no purpose to me whatsoever. It really just held me back and made things more difficult. So I still coped despite all the kind of extra emotional baggage I created for myself in the situation. I think that's a great example, Alex, and I couldn't agree with you more. And all of this stuff is going on in your head. The people around you, in the example that you cited, your bosses, your colleagues, your, 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 the people is in your office, don't even realize what's going on in, in your head, in your thought process. And if you get this crossover, this cross-contamination between your emotions and your thinking, you're running this gamut of of making, as you say, making everything much more difficult for you. Some of my clients call it overthinking, overanalyzing, being stuck, procrastination, not knowing which choice to make. And, and really what's happening is all the time is you're running round and round what we call in our model the carousel of despair. Now, I only use these terms to uh, what we try and do here is to take very complicated um, situations, lifestyle situations, life situations. That's why we call our videos life lessons. Try and take these complicated situations and simplify them. I can tell you, I said a few teachings ago, I love it. And clients say this to me so often, David, it can't be that easy. Well, the question is, it is that easy. You're a great example because you coped. And if you're watching this and you said to yourself, I can't cope, listen to what I'm going to say now. You are lying. You are lying to yourself because you have always coped. All we're talking about is the grace and the style and the ease in which you cope. What you're doing is you're coping, as Alex is just fantastically described like with a big anchor behind you and carrying two heavy suitcases and you still coped why don't you drop the suitcases and cut the anchor and cope more authentically more in your flow that's what wu wei means be in your flow don't create this heavy way of looking at life where you have to be perfect you have to be better than everybody else everybody you have to meet other people's expectations even if you don't know what those expectations are this is crazy thinking and you're not a crazy person stop it stop it and it starts with that simple technique separating your emotions emotions are natural wonderful fantastic from you create them don't be a victim of them stop being a victim i think as well david if we can get the emotions out the way and not <clears throat> let them become the focus of our attention and really kind of spiral out of control then we can focus more rationally and constructively on the situation we're facing or we'll face in the future because we're not saying oh well uh, throw caution to the wind no. and don't be uh, prepared or don't be, you know, of course it would be natural to anticipate there are going to be challenges or things that you might not understand or, you know, so of course don't be so relaxed that you get completely caught off guard, but don't be so uptight and living off uh, all these worst case scenarios. It's this is the Wu Wei, isn't it? So we're mm. saying don't be don't be supremely positive. Like oh, this is going to be a breeze, whatever challenging situation it is you're you're facing. But don't be 
so uptight and kind of obsessing about literally the worst case scenario outcome. Find that Wu Wei middle zone. Yeah, and that's a great description of Wu Wei, and and to uh, and while you're getting this into your belief system, so this becomes very natural. You should practice what I call the Shen test. Remember, Shen is my description of your innate, intrinsic, your inherent worth and value. Your worth and value that no one can give you and no one can take away from you. So the Shen test is just imagine you have a your child, if you've got children, and they're about six or seven, or imagine if you haven't got children, a niece or a nephew or a favoured child comes to you for advice. And imagine your child comes to you and say, Mummy, Daddy, I'm starting a new school tomorrow. And I'm terrified. What would you say to them then? You wouldn't say, well, let's avoid school. Let's, 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 you, oh my goodness, you're right. All the teachers are going to be expect, and your friends, and you're going to make new friends. Oh, this is terrible. It's really hard. You, you wouldn't say that to them. And what you would genuinely say to your son, your daughter, your niece, and your nephew, well, first of all, you'd give them a hug, wouldn't you? You'd give them a bit of love. Why don't you give yourself love instead of not trusting yourself? You see, you wouldn't say to them, well, you're right, because I don't trust you, because you're bound to fail at this, aren't you? You wouldn't say that to your child. That's almost child abuse. You wouldn't say, you're right to be scared, because you're a complete waste of time. You are going to fail. You won't meet their expectations. But you say that to yourself, don't you? When you say, you wouldn't say to your, your, your son, you're right to be worried about the new school because you know you can't cope. <laughs> you laugh at me as I'm saying that, but you say that to yourself easily, freely. You say it all the time. Imagine, I, I, I give this exercise to my clients. Imagine how many times during the day you say that negative self-talk to yourself. It's like, like, it's so hard to go, I'm frightened, I'm scared, I'm going to fail, They're not gonna, I'm not going to meet their expectations. It's like a kind of a machine gun going into your head. And that's when I say, you've got to stop it. Stop it. People say, oh, you shout, stop it, David. It's not that easy. It is. You're doing it. Stop doing it. I think, David, though, when you said that thing about giving yourself a hug, this is really the origin of this self-doubt, of the belief that we can't cope or we're not going to be able to cope is connected to our yeah. inner child. So, of course, um, when you ask me, oh, well, why do you think you're not going to be able to cope? And I say to you, well, yeah, because last time this happened, I didn't cope and it was a, it was a disaster and it all went wrong. And then I can give you another example and another example. And that's the kind of confirmation bias we use to reinforce the worst case scenarios. But the origin of this self-doubt of believing we can't cope goes back to childhood and is held then by that inner child part of our mind. That's right, Alex, and, and we call it the inner child. You may prefer to call it your ego or your subconscious mind. I prefer the label of the inner child because it allows us to use these metaphors. And it may be that when you were a child that you didn't receive parental support. You maybe was brought up in a household where your parents believed that the best way to drive you forward was to keep on setting the bar higher and higher and never being satisfied. I'm amazed how many parents, even today, even today, 2023, still believe that setting the bar like the carrot in front of the donkey just out of reach so when the child comes home from school and says i've done really well today i got 95 out of 100 father says you made a mistake on five and that little look that disapproval for a child is like a stab in the heart because they don't know how to deal with it, because they perceive the world through a very narrow lens, that their parents, their guardians, their teachers, I get a lot of this with per teaching of a child, 
that they are the authority figure. And what they're actually believing in their childlike way, that they're taking away their value and their worth, their shed. And that's why I would recommend you always doing the Shen test. Would you say to a physical, a biological child of yours, or a niece or nephew, or even the next, you wouldn't say this to a next door neighbor's child. You wouldn't say this to a stranger that you met in the supermarket. You wouldn't, you wouldn't say you're a failure. You can't cope. You're not good enough. You're, uh, don't deserve it. You wouldn't say that to a complete stranger. Yet you say to yourself, and that's where this goes wrong. So David, I think, do we need to prove to that part of our mind, our inner child, that uh, we can trust ourselves, that we we can cope by beginning to, rather than default to the avoidance of avoiding the red light feelings and uh, shying away from unfamiliar or challenging situations, that we face them head on and maybe start with small things to kind of prove to ourselves that if we can clear away the emotional kind of black cloud that we're creating, the emotional confusion, that it we can face this situation. Even if it's a small situation, perhaps better than with a small situation, we can face it with a clearer mind. We can be more resourceful, mm. more logical, more calm, more considered in our approach and, and kind of do it step by step with little little examples and little tests for ourselves. Yes, so um, as what you've just said is what I would call reparenting. Mm-hmm. So that part of your mind, you have to reparent, and we've done so many teachings. That's, this is my term. You, you almost, the adult you, big Alex, has to step in and reparent little Alex calmly with truth with honesty, with integrity. The example that Alex was kind enough to share with us, I think it was a true example as well. Now you see how she remembered all of the negative. (laughs) But if you roll back and listen to her story, look, listen to the end of her story. She said, but I really managed and I, despite all she got. Now, why doesn't she focus on that? Why doesn't she focus on, you know what, I made this really difficult for myself, but I came through it, and look now, I can do it easy. Why doesn't she focus on that? But no, it is very familiar for Alex to focus on the beginning of that journey, the negative thing, and to hold that. You see, it's accountability. She holds that even now as she was telling the story. Did you see... Go back and watch. She was very animated. She was very into it. She could tell you how bad she felt. She could tell you what expectations of others. She could, she living that. She was living that. That's why I was quiet. Now at the end, when she said, oh yeah, but I coped. She throws that away like it's nothing. But I think, David, now I am consciously making, uh, holding on to the times when I do cope, when I do manage things well, when things have a better outcomes than I'd anticipated because I, I, I realize the importance of focusing on that evidence and not just how extreme, you know, how I laid awake every night for the first 10 days of the job crying because of all the worst case scenarios. I, I'm kind of consciously celebrating the small wins for myself, the small ways in which uh, on a daily basis or a weekly basis, I'm proving to myself that I can cope with unfamiliar situations. So <laughs> so here's where it sounds, and my clients accuse me of this, I'm being pedantic. <laughs> okay. Now you see how what she said there? Small wins. Mm. Now the big, the big stuff for Alex is still the angst and the problems she talked mm. about. These aren't small wins. You have won. Yeah. You have won. And this is what I... I dislike about the three lies. We're talking about I can't cope. Let me tell you, you will and have and always will cope. You've never not coped. You've always coped. Even if it was you went to bed, cried for 10 days every night, you (laughs) coped. So we're not talking about coping or not coping. We're talking about how you cope, the way you cope 
the style, the grace, the ease. My words would be your authenticity, who you really are, valuing yourself, your shen, coping with a, a smile on your face. Not coping and saying, oh, that's a small victory. No, that's a massive victory. Stop it. Stop belittling and demeaning and, and lessening your worth. Oh, yes, but this is really big, David. For 10 days, I was really crying as every night. How about the rest of the days? How about the weeks and the years you were in the job and doing wonderfully? Oh, yeah, but those are just small victories. Do you see how the words you use mm. are the bricks that build your house? Please, this is why we do these teachings. This is not pedantic. Listen to what people are saying. Listen to what your self-talk is saying. Your self-talk is a conversation with the universe. You are setting your map, your way forward. And if you tell yourself, I can't cope, which way are you going to go? Which way are you going to go? And this is a confirmation bias or self-fulfilling prophecy. You set your path. This is your responsibility. You can't get out of it. You are accountable. You are accountable for your self-talk. Once you take that accountability, again, I've said this twice in this teaching, your life changes today. Your life changes today because you're changing it. Not me, not Alex, not pills, not drink, not eating too much. You're changing it, and that's what I want for you, because I believe in you, because I see your shen. I see your worth and value, and I know that that cannot be touched by anybody in any way. You are absolutely amazing, awesome person. And if you do not believe in yourself, then you're lying to yourself. Stop it. Be truthful. Be honest and walk your path. Wonderful. Thank you, David. Well, I really hope you've enjoyed this teaching. I will put links in the show notes to other uh, teachings that will help you with this subject. So to do with self-doubt, comparing, criticizing, being judgmental, and also that inner child reparenting work. If you have enjoyed the teaching, please do let us know and perhaps share it with someone else who you think may think that will also benefit from it. David works every week with clients all over the world on exactly these sorts of issues. If you'd like to learn more about David's consultations by Zoom video call, please also check out the show notes where I'll put a link. And finally, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We produce new teachings every week and we would love to share your journey with you. Bye-bye.